Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a very, very mixed haul video. I've got Apple watch bands, I've got shoes, I've got clothing, I've got jewelry, I've got a luxury handbag. So there is like everything, almost everything in this haul. I think the only thing I'm probably missing is small leather goods. But before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love luxury, if you love fashion, you love pretty things that are expensive, but you just like to look at them then. And I would love if you would subscribe to my channel if you are new here, press that subscribe button below, ring the bell as well so you can be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every weekend and then occasionally I might have a midweek upload as well. Now getting right into today's video, I'm gonna start off with the Apple Watch bands that I'm gonna show you guys. So this part of the video is in fact sponsored by Casetify and I love that name, that name is so cool. So Casetify is a company that specializes in phone cases for a variety of brands as well as watch bands for a variety of brands as well and MacBook cases whatnot but today we are going to be focusing on the Apple watch bands that they gifted me I have a few different uh, boxes here all of Apple watch bands we're gonna open up this one first and as you can see obviously by the packaging it is going to be definitely suitable for gifting as well if you're looking to you know get ahead before Christmas if you're looking to buy something for Father's Day as well I know in Australia Father's Day is only like two months or less than two months away if you want to get ahead on your presents this is going to be a really good gift idea as well. These are the two that I haven't unboxed yet. Very nice, sleek packaging, very presentable. Okay, let's pull out this one. So this is an all black watch band. These watch bands are made of 316 stainless steel, which is a very, very high quality stainless steel. It is also great for those who tend to suffer with like allergies, skin allergies like me. I actually cannot wear some types of metals. I'm allergic to nickel, but I can wear stainless steel and it doesn't cause me any rash or allergies on my wrist. Okay, so with each watch band, you are gonna get this film that goes over the top just to protect it. So I'm gonna quickly take these off. Wow, look at this. This is the all black watch band with that plastic film now removed. And it's so glossy. Okay, so here we have the rose gold and the all black. So this is with the silver, base metal stainless steel. So for every watch that you get, you will also get this little box inside that casing and it does have the adjustment tools that you will need in order to adjust the bed. So I had to take links out of mine. It is very, very easy. So this is the one I'm wearing with the gold detailing down the middle. These are water, sweat and corrosion resistant. So I do also have um, a case that I wanted to show you guys. So they did kindly gift me this case for my iPhone Pro and it's also mag safe as well. Now I do as well, I'll have a 15% off link for Casetify. I'm gonna leave that link on the screen as well down below in the description bar. So definitely check them out if you're looking for a gift, you're looking for something for yourself. These watch bands are amazing. Now let's move on to the next part of this video, which is a heck of a lot of items that I have to show you guys. I think I'm gonna start off with, I think I'm gonna do clothing first just because I've got them hanging up like around my room at the moment. And yeah, this is a definitely a very, very mixed haul. So uh, first item I'm gonna show you uh, I got most of the clothing pieces except for one from Louisa Via Roma because Louisa Via Roma was actually offering, um, I think it was 40% off. They do like this 40% uh, off promo code for like a short period of time every now and then and you pretty much got to be on the website to know about it. That's kind of the only like annoying thing with Louisa Via Roma is that like they can have really great discounts but unless you're actually actively checking the website you won't really know about the biggest discount. So I did happen to be on their website when this code popped up so I jumped on it and the first thing that I actually bought was something kind of weird <laughs> something that I don't typically buy and that is uh, socks like I bought uh, luxury designer branded socks so these are from Jacquemus so they've only got the logo on one side but they were very very low cost I don't think these these ones didn't have a discount applied they actually was the standard price and I think it was about $60 Australian they do feel like they're fairly thick anyway so hopefully they do stand the ability of my big toe poking through them <laughs> That's kind of a weird thing to talk about. I was thinking of styling these with like, you know, my Hermes Chipre sandals or something like that, or I don't know. That's probably the way I would style them in like the weirdest, ugliest kind of way. Not typically my sort of style that really like, you know, the sandals and socks, but I feel like maybe it can be done with the trip Chipre, maybe. Okay, and then also as well, I did place two orders on Louisa V Roma. So the socks, 
this and then I got some leggings and a hoodie but um, I ended up returning something from that order and I took the store credit because otherwise Louisa V Aroma will deduct $30 uh, the shipping cost again like the return shipping they will deduct it from your refund which wouldn't make any sense because the item I was returning was pretty much only like 50 bucks for the first order along with the socks I also picked up these sandals so these are Birkenstock sandals they're made of a shearling so a wool um, a wool skin uh, they've got a platform on them and I thought that these would be a pretty good alternative for the Hermes Chipre in the you know like the beige one that they have it's more of a newer season one they were very low cost as well with the discount for this the discount code did work on them so I think I paid like about a hundred odd dollars where usually they were like 200 odd bucks so I'll leave this link down so I'm gonna leave everything linked down below anyway you know the Jacquemus socks this but if you are gonna shop on Louisa V Aroma definitely try to wait until they've got like a really good coupon code uh, because um, their returns policy is a real bugger so let me get the other items that I got for my second daughter and also there was another discount code uh, for the 40% off that was uh, active for an hour and again because I was wanting to use my store credit I was keeping an eye on the website so I did jump on board and get these two pieces so I've got here um, I'll show you this one first this is so this is Jacquemus this is uh, Versace it is just like a you know crop top sports bra that sort of thing I typically wear these sorts of things a lot just around the house with like an overshirt that kind of thing that's just what I feel most comfortable in because I mean bra like you know bras with wires are not the most comfortable thing so this was quite low cost I think like with the discount code it was like about $60 quality is pretty good comfortable like uh, comfortable stretchy band the sizing is a bit weird so I took a size 4 and I typically wear about a size 12 and then the other one was this Jacquemus uh, I think it's a satin this was more expensive this cost me about $400 Australian with the discount code but I did really like this um, Jacquemus like metal thing that it's got here if that focuses in there we go wrong way around that's it so there's no way you'll catch me without a shirt underneath this that's I know that there are definitely ladies that look fashionable like wearing it the way that the model's showing it but I don't plan on wearing it that way it's got a slip uh, at the back too uh, very nice fabric I did need to steam it as soon as I got it but it doesn't seem like it's going to get all too crinkly uh, but yeah I just like I said I had that store credit and I was like you know what I'd I want to use it. I hate store credits. I want to get rid of it. And then this came up in the section that was applicable for the 40% off. And I was like, you know what? I actually like it. I wear shirts like this quite a lot, you know, like satiny sort of shirts a lot because I find that they're, you know, good for like the weather here. You know, in winter, it doesn't get too cold. So I typically wear this sort of stuff regularly, although I wouldn't be wearing this like day to day. This would just be for if we're going out somewhere, then I would wear something like this. And then the last clothing piece, now I actually got this a while ago, but I thought that I would include it in this um, haul video because it is a really popular singlet at the moment. This is the Loewe, Loewe, whatever you say it, I think that's how you say it, um, with the anagram embroidery on the front. Uh, this is the standard singlet, but they do have a crop version now. This goes in and out of stock on multiple retailer websites. I find that Netta Porter probably has the cheapest pricing for this one. So, um, but I'll leave a few link down below because yeah, like I said, it goes in and out of stock. It is really popular. They've got different colors. Um, so my size is a large, it does fit true to size. Loewe is doing really well at the moment in terms of like they're ready to wear. I feel like it's been pretty popular. Um, even Celine as well has been pretty popular with their ready to wear. I do have a few Celine pieces, most of which have been bought pre-loved. So I haven't really showed you on this channel. I kind of has, I don't know, you may be noticed, but I don't really show luxury ready to wear that much anymore because a lot of the time I buy pre-loved and I just, I don't know, like I just kind of feel like it can be frustrating when I'm showing you something that is like hard to get, perhaps pre-loved at the price I paid and it's hard to link it. So I kind of just took a step back from, from sort of showing it. But when I do buy items that are from like retailers like Farfetch, Louisa V Aroma, Netta Porta, Setire, all those kind of places, then I'm okay to add them in because I know that there's this variety of retailers that you could get them from anyway. I'm gonna show you this cute little box. So this is from In A Bag Shop. I've spoken about them quite a few times on my channel. They do really nifty bag charms. They also do personalized custom straps for like your Hermes bags and other bags really as well. This was kindly gifted to me by In A Bag Shop as well. So, but I do have a few charms from them and straps that I have bought from them. So I'm definitely a paying customer too. So I picked out this cute, adorable little Constance bag charm. Oh, how cute is it? 
So I do have a few of their charms. I've got like an Evelyn, a Picatan, a Birkin charm, a Kelly charm, like everything. And the color for this is kind of like Cray. So this is gonna go really well with my Cray 25. I feel like I might go ahead and just take it off because I, I don't know, because if I'm using this on my Kelly 25 in Cray, I want it to kind of look more monotone. So I think I'm just going to wrap this around and then kind of just like loop it through, you know what I mean? Sort of like, like that if you get me, uh, like how you do with the Rodeo charm, that kind of thing. So let me show you now the shoes that I got. I'm going to start off with these. So these are just Nikes, nothing luxury, but I wanted to show you them because I think the color is really cool, though I'm not quite sure I would get the most wear out of them. I know that when it comes to colors, yes, I do like to wear a pop of color sometimes, um, but then a lot of the time I just feel more comfortable in neutrals. But I feel like this kind of color can work really well with neutrals anyway. And it is, um, it's called Lucky Green. These are the Air Jordan ones and I actually buy them in, typically if it's the colorways available, I buy them in the junior sizing. I've been told that the junior like the shoes for juniors is made a little bit different than the adults and yes because I do have adult um, Nike Air Jordans and yeah they are made a little bit different but in terms of comfort I didn't notice any difference like to me they're all very comfortable so if I'm getting the juniors the only things that you might notice is like the cuts might be slightly a little bit different versus adult ones maybe the quality is not as like top notch with the adult ones but I mean at the end of the day they're Nike they're not a luxury brand so none of it is really like you know luxury quality like none of it's really that amazing in quality I'm just being totally frank with you like when you even look at some of the labor with Nike they don't have the best reputation in terms of labor as well and this is with a lot of fashion in general like even luxury fashion there is parts of it made in China and I will do a video on that I will I promise I'll eventually get around to it but the whole fashion industry has like dirty secrets and you know stuff that they even not secrets actually it's quite public information if you do your research but they don't want you to know it like face value but anyways um these if they're still available I will link them down below I know in Australia yeah you can still get them and I paid $110 Australian for these because they are the juniors one and then the next shoes continuing on with sneakers is the in a different, very different price point, the Louis Vuitton Runaway. So these have been around for a long time. They're very, very popular. They have a platform just in here. So um, they've got like an insole that's super high. And when I stick my finger in, that sounds a bit weird. Um, like my finger pretty much comes to about there and that's how much of an insole like thickness there is like from here to here that's all just like a big thick insole and then it um declines down into like a standard sort of thin insole so these are actually technically a repurchase for me so i got them before from my contacts in europe like like you guys know I, a lot of the luxury stuff i get is um from europe at less than the retail price but i had these before in a 35 and a half when i lived in sydney and that's when my feet were smaller. <laughs> so I ended up selling those because they no longer, they actually, I sold them because I found them too big. I, I didn't even wear them. I found them too big and I sold them uh, once I got them from Europe. Uh, that was a long time ago, maybe about two years ago. And I'd been wanting to get another one since, but I was waiting and waiting and waiting until they kept, became available in um, private sales because the way that it kind of works with Europe's sales stock and that sort of thing, it's very like, Sec exclusive seclusive that kind of thing and you can't just buy whatever you want it's very particular so I was waiting for my size to come around and these are in a 36 now typically with the runaway they do run a half a size big my feet because it's warm here I now am never like so let's say for example so this makes more sense all right back before when I lived in Sydney my true size my true size was a 35 and a half euro to a 36 euro so I needed a 35 runaway because it was more often cold my feet didn't swell or I could do a 35 and a half like right in the midst of summer uh, so it's, it's pretty much a half a size down to a full size down for the runaway depending on like your feet but now that I'm here and my feet tend to swell a lot like if anything my feet are like 24 7 always bigger now so now wearing the 36 my true size typically is a 36 but this is like wearing a 37 or a 36 and a half do you kind of get what i'm saying like it is about half a size bigger to up to a full size bigger move on to the last pair of shoes that i have so i do have shoes from chanel I actually bought from my favorite place dubai 
shoes under the retail price aside from my contacts in Europe and that is Vestiaire Collective. Sometimes I check out Fashion File but I just feel like Vestiaire's got the best deals because I can negotiate with the seller and a lot of the time they're just private sellers. I feel like these are a fairly recent season. I feel like I've seen these more recently in the past year perhaps or something like that. If you know what season they're from please let me know but they have a beigey kind of like a true yellowy beige kind of um, uh, front toe box area. Ooh, I feel like these might have been like sale stock maybe you don't really know sometimes because I know that with like some of the stock that I can get from Europe and sometimes I'll put it on my closet page which mind you my Instagram closet page has been shut down because I love to do that like let me just go on a rant right I just need to say this I need to get this off my chest there's an article in this you can go and read it they were more than happy to have a child exploitation ring running on Instagram giving people the algorithm to find the content that they needed these sick sick vile human beings um instagram was more than happy to let that run on their platform until they were pulled up on it like i think there was a big investigation on it and they got pulled up for it we didn't get to hear a lot it seems like the mainstream media quite obviously favors uh facebook instagram that kind of thing so there was a bit of a story on it but the mainstream media didn't put it on like the mainstream news but I'm going to leave that article linked down below if you want to know about what I'm saying. However when it comes to selling luxury goods they do not like you to do that because and this is my opinion my theory is that the luxury brands Chanel, Hermes, Dior, Louis Vuitton all that they pay millions and millions of dollars for advertising on these platforms on Facebook on Instagram you know, other social media platforms, YouTube, TikTok, everything, okay? They pay millions of dollars in advertising. So they have pull when it comes to their influence over social media, te big tech giants, all right? And also they're all in cahoots anyway, okay? They're all in cahoots, those, those types. Um, and my theory, my opinion, this is just my opinion for entertainment purposes only, uh, that because they have so much pull, wherever they can actually stop anyone selling luxury goods under the retail price, whether it be pre-loved, new, you're wanting to rehome items that you don't want, whatever it may be, they will shut you down. They will do their best to shut you down. They will, the team at Meta will have their algorithms and once you flag up in their algorithms, they pull up your account, they'll be like, okay, yep, you're, you know, breaching intellectual pro property rights. Because that to them is them doing the benefit to the luxury fashion houses um, because that's what they want. They do not want competition. They do not want people to be buying goods at a lower price. They don't want that. They want you to go to store and spend the retail price because that means it's maximum profit for them. They don't want people, they don't want anyone selling stuff that they buy. Quite clearly, I know that from experience with Hermes as well. They don't want you selling anything. They want you to keep it. They want you to wipe your ass with it. They do not care. They just want you to not sell it. And that is why they will shut, try their very best to shut down businesses that are selling items that are outside of the store, pre-loved, whatever it may be, they will shut you down. And that's exactly what has happened to me multiple times. And I always fight back to them with legal arguments to argue for something that is actually my legal right to do. It is my legal right to sell something that I don't want. And at the end of the day, it really just shows if things can be sold under the retail price and they're actually authentic, genuine items, then that means that luxury brands are just charging us too much money. Like, isn't that really what it says? And again, it goes back to as to why they would want to shut you down. So yeah, um, that's currently the state at the moment. My typical Instagram for sell, like selling anything, rehoming anything would be personfleet.closet, but it's currently disabled. So I mean, at the moment, I'm just using my main Instagram to sell stuff. I will put it in my stories and then I have a highlight tab. So that's the best I can do now, but I can't put pricing on there and I can't put all the info on there because it may flag with the Instagram algorithm. Their robots will pick up certain keywords. So usually when you see that people are selling brand new items on Vestiaire without a receipt, uh, a lot of the time you'll find that, and they're from Europe, you'll find that it's probably been private sales stock and there might be like a little flaw with it or something or something you won't, may not even notice. But this one I noticed has kind of got a, like a slight flaw on the toe. I can I see that like when they were coating it, they've not painted it correctly or something like that. From here, can you see that? Like you can't. So no big deal. To me, it's all about saving on the retail price. Um, so I'm going to leave a link to Shop Vestia down below and I'm going to leave the discount codes that I know of as well. A lot of the time you've got to be a new user. So I create new accounts. <laughs> <laughs> anything to save money I'm super frugal I love luxury and I can afford luxury but I am so avid on saving money because I just think why should I pay 
uh, like the highest price I can pay when I don't have to. So I'll leave the link down below to Vestier and any of the coupon codes I currently know. Okay, so now let's get onto the big ticket items. You know what, I'm gonna start off with, I'm gonna do this one first because I've already been wearing it and you may have already spotted it. Um, but I got a Cartier bracelet. Now, all I got was a travel pouch because in fact, I actually did get this from Japan. I had told maybe a couple of people about this that I'd been hunting around for a love bracelet. So here it is here. And my love bracelet is in rose gold and it has the diamonds all over it. So it's not the paved diamond. This is the one where it's just got the diamonds all around like the bracelet sort of thing. So all the way around, it's got the diamonds. First time I've actually ever bought one and I have to bite my tongue because like about a couple years ago, I made a video that said that the Cartier love bracelet is an overrated luxury item. And I still kind of stand by it in a way. Yes, I do. I feel like it is overrated, okay? Because when you look at the Japanese market, the pre-love market for the, anything that's Cartier love, it is so oversaturated. Like there is so much there. It's there's, a, there's so much there. So it is in a way overrated because if you're paying the full retail price for it, um, you can actually pay half the retail price by just buying it pre-loved, like a minimum of half the retail price from Japan, that is. I know some other places vary, but I always link down below the places that I shop from pre-loved and I will do that. I'll link all the Japanese sellers that you can shop from. I tend to shop on Rakuten, but it's not the easiest place to shop from because it's literally all in Japanese. So I'll just link all the eBay sellers that are from Japan. Anyways... Um, so yes, why did I say that it was overrated? Because it's too popular, it's oversaturated, like everyone and their, their mum has it, okay? That's why I said it was overrated. But why did I buy it? The reason I bought it is because I wanted to grow my fine jewellery collection. Um, I did not buy jewellery before, like bracelets in particular. I've always had sort of rings, somewhat-ish, right? Um, because I was breastfeeding before. And my son was always sleeping next to me and I always felt like bracelets would probably scratch his head more often than like the hand because it's not like I'm cupping I wasn't like cupping his head like that but I always had like his head like resting in my arm sort of thing and like sometimes it would be near my wrist area so I never wore bracelets to sleep ever because I was worried it was gonna scratch his head especially like you know babies that sort of thing they got very soft soft skin and soft skulls as well when they when they're very young and now that my son is three I've decided, look, I think it's okay for me to now add bracelets into my collection. My son still sleeps next to me because um, I love my children. I'll have my children sleep next to me for as long as they will. Uh, but yeah, I thought about which bracelet am I going to add. I was thinking about the Van Cleef and Arpels bracelet. I'll put a picture on the screen. But like the petite one, because uh, that one you can actually adjust. But I was worried about it breaking because I actually plan on wearing it all the time, which is actually a matter of fact what I've been doing. I've already been wearing this for at least two weeks, a minimum of two weeks, maybe three weeks now. So as soon as I got it, I put it on because I just wanted to get the feel for it and make sure I've made the right decision with it. Um, but I was told by many people uh, that the, the love bracelet, I would feel like I'm wearing nothing at all and it is going to be the best fine jewelry bracelet that I could ever buy. And I actually agree. <laughs> so I have to eat my words and say, yes, I still agree with the fact that the Cartier Love bracelet's overrated in terms of like if you're paying the retail price versus the luxury market being so saturated with it. Um, but in terms of it actually being a good bracelet to buy, I think that that's exactly where it is. It is a great, comfortable bracelet. It is secure on your wrist because it's got that screw mechanism. It's just so comfortable. You've got two sizing. You've got like the thin, which is this one actually here. This is the thin. I should have said that. Then you've got the thick one. So you it, you can really cater to like your wrist size because I have thin wrists. And if you want to stack it, then, you know, you can do that and they really work well stacked together. So you might want to know price. Okay. Um, price. I've kind of been scaling it back on saying pricing. I think that I kind of have a threshold now. Like if it's over 10,000, I'm probably never, never going to say it. Um, and that's to do with like security reasons. I've been a little bit more mindful of oversharing on social media, and especially in today's economy, crime rates are going up and that sort of thing. And I know that you could say, well, don't buy luxury at all. And then you don't have to worry. And like, yeah, you could not buy luxury at all, but you only live once and I like it. And I paid $9,000 Australian for this. The retail price on this, however, is much, much more. You can look it up yourself or whatever country you're in. It's the thin love bracelet with diamonds all around it, all around, not paved, but just all around where the screws would normally, like that screw look would normally be from Japan. But I didn't get anything but the pouch. So, I mean, you are sacrificing things like, you know, uh, certificates, you're sacrificing box, all that sort of stuff, which some people don't want to do, but 
I wasn't that fast. Plus, I just get it authenticated anyway, which I do. Um, I recommend that you can use real authentication. I'll leave a discount code for them on the screen, but there are other authenticators that do Cartier anyway as well. Let's move on to the last piece, which is also pre-loved from Japan and a great deal as well. So those same sellers that I'm going to link, they're going to be the place that you can go to as well to try and get a deal like this for yourself as well. So I have here classic flap dust bag. You know, it's uh, kind of going to be obvious that this is a classic flap, right? I got finally, finally a Chanel classic flap. Now, you've seen me unbox a Chanel classic flap before when I did my vintage restoration and that wasn't mine. Okay, that was my friend's one that I bought for her and did the spa work on it and then I did a video on it. I did have a classic flap before in a pink color, in a medium actually. So it's not my first classic flap per se, but it's my first black classic flap, which is the ultimate classic flap. If you're getting a classic flap in black, that's it. Like that's the ultimate one. It's black, beige, white. If anything, black, then beige, then white. Like those are the OG classic flaps. So I kind of feel like even though I did have, um, you know, the pink one before, it doesn't count per se because I never actually had a black one until now. Now, the other thing that I have to say is that pink one, yes, I did sell it. And that was because it was a medium size, which is the same as this. This is medium. And it was in caviar. Now, when I bought this, I actually bought this a little while back, maybe about a few, pretty much around the time that I actually got the Cartier Love bracelet, I bought it. And I did not show it yet or anything like that because I wasn't even sure. Actually, no, it would have been before the Cartier Love Bracelet. But yeah, actually, it would have been more than that. But anyways, yeah, I didn't show it before because I wasn't sure this was actually going to be something that I was going to keep because I didn't like the medium classic flapping caviar. But what I've actually discovered is that lambskin is so much better in terms of, like, the feel of the classic flap. It doesn't feel as stiff and so rigid and I actually find that it fits that little bit more than what I could fit in my medium classic flap in that lilac-y pink kind of colour. So now I'm absolutely certain that this is going to be staying in my collection. Um, I probably maybe would have preferred the small, but the small in terms of its pricing is less competitive than that of the medium, even though the medium is more expensive. So I found that like the stock from Japan, the medium was always the cheaper one. And that's why I was like, you know, I'm going to try the medium again. Plus I'm liking bigger bags now anyway. So it kind of worked out good because I feel like this gives me that bigger, slightly bigger bag look. Plenty of reviews on YouTube, so I'm not really going to cover anything else, but I will just share with you the price that I paid for it. I paid just over, a little bit just over $8,000 Australian. For me to send it to here, I typically use Blackship, which is an on-forwarding service, and I'll leave them linked down below. But some of these sellers, like if you are going through eBay, some of them actually do ship international anyway. 8,000, just over 8,000 is about half the price, isn't it? Almost half the price off. I think it's like $15,000 now or something for a classic flap. It's just ridiculous. And why would you pay that when you could just get one that's like in amazing condition from Japan anyway, you know, or even pre-loved like Fashion File would have classic flaps well under the retail price as well. And this, this even has the microchip. So, I mean, it's not that old of a classic flap. It's not new, it's used condition. Lambskin will show more wear and that kind of thing. Um, but lambskin typically does sell cheaper anyway than, than caviar too, which is another thing if you're okay with lamb. If you're curious, I did do a video on how I buy Chanel bags like under the retail and I'll leave that link down below and that's going to give you more of the information about authenticity checks, payment and all that sort of stuff that could give you advice in that regards if you are worried. One last thing, Chanel bag inserts, I'm going to leave some link down below for all the sizes of the classic flap link down below in the description bar as well. So yeah, that is it. Check the description bar down below. Don't forget I've got that link to get the discount code with Casetify and um, yeah, that is it. Thanks and um, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.